Okay, so you've set up your Zapier account and now you need to start connecting some apps or accounts to it. The easiest way to do that is just to go to your log into Zapier and then go to My Apps in the submenu here and then just start typing in the name of whatever app you want to connect. So for most of you, you might be wanting to connect your email marketing platform, something like Active Campaign, for instance. So you'd search in the, in the bar here, click on the app, and then that's going to bring up the window here for some more information. Now, for instance, for Active Campaign, it's going to ask you for the API URL and API key. Now, for most apps, to get that data, you need to log into your app, and you need to be an admin for that app. So we'll log in here. And you need to go to, say, the settings page, etc. It will usually be under settings or admin or preferences. And then under here, under the settings, you'll probably have something called developer or you'll have something called API or you'll have something called integrations under the settings. And that's where it's going to be your API um, URL and secret key. Now, I'm not going to go there because then I'll have to change it because you'd, you'd be able to see it, but you just copy and paste it in here and then click yes, continue. Now for other apps, it might be a little bit, it might just simply ask you for a login. So for something like uh, Google, for instance, that usually just asks for a login. So if you click on Google, it's just gonna say, hey, select your account. You'll select the account. It will then check to see if you're logged in and it will just say, do you wanna allow this uh, app to have access and you just click on allow to have access and then you'll see that showing up in your list here. Now whilst you're here it's always a good idea just to routinely test your integrations just to make sure that they're working. So you can see there's a couple here that aren't working. So you could either reconnect them clicking the reconnect and then that will open up the um, app connection and then you can reconnect it here if you wanted to. Okay, so now we've reconnected that, we'll retest it. And now we've got a success. So we'll just change the name of that there as well. This one here, we don't need that one anymore, so we'll remove that from our list. And then we'll just continue on testing the rest of the apps. And they're all coming up green, so that's good. So they're all connected. So I generally like to test my apps maybe once a month, once every two or three months, because API details sometimes change. You might push the change on the admin side. It might be a system update that changes it. Um, might be some other user that changes it, or you might have to change it for security reasons. Um, and when that happens, it's going to disconnect from Zapier because the API key that you that you used originally is no longer matching whatever the uh, Zapier or whatever your um, your app is actually using now. So you will have to routinely check this. Zapier will tell you if there's an error, but often those error emails go unnoticed in the inbox and then your Zap's not gonna be running. And the first thing you'll know about it is, you know, someone that is expecting to get something from you doesn't get it and then you troubleshoot it and hey, the Zap hasn't been working for six months. So I recommend checking all of these just once a month, reconnecting any that are broken. And that really will just get rid of pretty much all the errors that most people get on their Zapier accounts. So that's how to connect accounts to Zapier, how to test that they're working, and also how to reconnect or disconnect them if you need to do that as well. Hi, I'm Mitch Bayless, and if you're looking for someone to help you with your business automation, then click the button below to schedule your free call today. And if you found this video useful, remember to click like, and also subscribe to our channel for more videos.